This is the second video over rules of order. In the first video, we went over the acronym PIMDAS and how that helps us establish what math operations to do first, as well as a first example. And this video is just a continuation of that. We're moving on to the second example, and we'll finish all examples from there. Switching over to example two, if you haven't tried this on your own yet, now would be the perfect time to do so. Again, I'm going to start with what not to do. This is a common mistake that I see a lot, and this is probably my biggest pet peeve in any math class. So that's why I'm going to tell you not to do it now so you don't ever do it again. So the wrong thing to do in this problem is think that you can take this square and take it to each piece or to each fraction individually. I'm not going to take my first piece and square it minus my second piece and square it. That actually gives you the wrong answer. So that's a bad habit, so let's get that out of your mind at this time. What PIMDAS says to do is to work the inside of your parentheses first. So in the side, these parentheses, I need to subtract these fractions. To subtract fractions, we know we need a least common denominator. My LCD between 3 and 2 is 6. So I'm going to multiply my first fraction by 2 over 2, and I'm going to multiply my second fraction by 3 over 3. I multiply fractions straight across. 2 times 5 gives me 10, over 2 times 3 gives me 6, minus 1 times 3 gives me 3, over 2 times 3, which gives me 6. So now inside my parentheses, I have a common denominator. But don't forget to copy everything from step to step so you don't lose anything along the way. So working inside my parentheses, I can subtract these fractions. 10 minus 3 gives me 7 over my LCD of 6. That is squared times 8. So I do have parentheses left here, but inside this parentheses, I can't really do anything because my division doesn't come out evenly. So I'm going to move on to my next step, which is exponents. We know we can take fractions to an exponent by um, squaring each piece, both the numerator and the denominator. So 7 squared gives me 49, over 6 squared gives me 36, times 8. So I need to multiply this fraction in the whole number. We know the best way to do that is to make them both fractions and then to always reduce first. So I want to find a common factor between 8 and 36. The largest factor that goes into both of them is 4. 8 divided by 4 gives me 2, and 36 divided by 4 gives me 9. Make sure I cannot reduce any more, which I can't, so I multiply straight across. 49 times 2 gives me 98 over 9 times 1, which gives me 9, which is my final answer. So I want to go back to something here. Here, I could have divided these out, giving me a very complicated decimal using my calculator. But this is the perfect time to point out that fractions are always better than decimals. Fractions are always exact, and decimals might be nice or they might be ugly. So just always keep it into the fraction form, and then we won't ever have to worry about that. So I have one more example that's going to be very similar to your homework problem. At this time, I suggest you pause the video and see if you can work this one on your own. Okay. So this one is one of those that has the hidden parentheses. We need to work the inside of the square root first. So I have square or exponent, and since they're isolated from each other, I can work them both independently. 13 squared, or 13 times 13, gives me 169, minus 5 squared, or 5 times 5, gives me 25. Subtracting both of those, because I'm going to work the inside of the parentheses first, 169 minus 25 gives me 144, and the square root of 144 is 12, because remember, I want to take the base times itself two times, since I'm focusing on a square root here, to give me this number. And 12 times 12, or 12 squared, gives me 144. So the square root of 12 squared cancels out the square and the square root at that time. So my final answer here is 12. 
Okay, let's finally go back to those Facebook and Pinterest examples. I've separated them out here, and I want to see if you got the right answer to these first and foremost, or if you need to take the time to redo these at this time. So if you didn't follow PEMDAS from the beginning, now's a great time to do this problem and follow the PEMDAS now, and hopefully this time you get the right answer. So the correct answer to this problem is 20. And let me work through it very quickly to show you how to get that. There's no parentheses and there's no exponents here, so my first thing I'm going to focus on is multiplication. I see it three different times throughout this problem, and since they're all isolated, I can work them all at the same time. 4 times 4 gives me 16, so I'm going to put 16 in all those underlined places here. Again, ensuring I copy everything down from step to step so I don't lose anything. Now it's all addition and subtraction, so I'm going to work it from left to right. So 16 plus 16 gives me 32. 32 plus 4 gives me 36. And 36 minus 16 gives me the final correct answer of 20. So hopefully that's what you got first, or at least the second time you worked this problem. Example 2, again, if you need to redo this problem doing PEMDAS, now would be the perfect time to do so. The correct answer to this problem is 7, and again, I'll walk through that very quickly. There's no parentheses, there's no exponents here, so I can move to multiplication and division. Those are isolated from each other, so I can work them at the exact same time. So I have 6 minus 1 times 0, anything times 0 is 0, plus 2 divided by 2, which gives me 1. Work this from left to right. 6 minus 0 gives me 6, plus 1 gives me my final answer of 7. And the last one that I have here, if you need to rework this using PEMDAS, now would be the great time to do that. And the correct answer to this one is B, or 12. Again, no parentheses, no exponents, so I start with multiplication. 3 times 3 gives me 9. All I have left is addition and subtraction. Work it from left to right. 3 plus 9 gives me 12. 12 minus 3 gives me 9. And 9 plus 3 gives me 12. And that is my final answer, or B, 12. So at this time, you should be able to work any problem with multiple operations no matter how simple or complicated it may seem.